Hi, Councilman Zimmerman, can you hear me? Hey, Larry, do you want to lead us in prayer and flag salute? Go ahead and do your mic. Can you hear me now? Yep, there you are. Or now you're now you're muted. Can you hear me now, Hunter? Yep. Yep. Okay. Are you there? Yeah. Can you do uh, the prayer and uh, flag salute, pledge allegiance? Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. How's everything going with you? Oh, it's been going. Been going? Yeah, yeah. My, kid, my kids just finally got over the virus thing, so. Oh, did they? How'd they... Uh, or did they have a hard time dealing with it or, or how they no, respond to it? it was just about a week long thing and then they were doing better. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So they're they're over the hump. Yeah, we, we were together with them over the weekend finally. Oh good. Good deal. Good deal. Hi Michael. Michael, you aren't, you're muted right now. Ah, uh, there we go. Hello, Hunter and Larry. Hey, Michael. And everybody else. That's a neat hat, Brian. You're muted too. Brian, you're muted. Well, maybe Brian's gonna do a silent thing tonight. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize I was. <laughs> there he goes. Hi. I, 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 I used all my best material already. Well, nobody we just heard thought, it. We just thought you were trying to be a mime. Yeah. Well, that's exactly. I said, oh, we're doing city council meeting by mime. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I tried to give myself a haircut earlier with the with the shears and and yeah, usually I just wear it when I go outside. 
to keep me full there. And so, yeah, that's why it, it is the way that it is because I brutalized my hair. <laughs> Well, I had a friend that used to do a flow bee on his hair. Did you ever see one of them? I think mm-hmm. I remember the infomercial as a child in the late 70s, yes. This thing you hooked up to a vacuum cleaner and it sucked your hair up and then it snipped it after it was sucked up. So that way you got an even haircut. <laughs> yeah, my my cousins behind, that lived behind us, uh, they would they would use that on their dogs and then and then on their kids so <laughs> well in basic training that's they had the shears with the vacuum on them and i don't know if that's the same thing but it like it just when they were shaving your head in basic it would just suck it all right up and hardly anything fell on the on the floor yep brent you're muted too there you go not now hey brent What's going on today? Oh, I'm not sure. I guess we're doing we're zooming because of the virus or something. I don't know. It's a good thing Brian called. I was ready to head down to City Hall. Yeah, you don't want to go down there and catch it. Hunter, how you doing? I, I can't complain. It'd do me He's no good. To, it'd do me no good to complain. Come on, how's the COVID? Oh, it's it has its ups and downs. Gives me What's the your name. Gives me these. <laughs> gives you these uh, bad heat flashes. Just what? Uh, yeah, that's puberty. Oh. Just all of a sudden, bang. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> You're, a little too young. You're a little too young to be going through your middle age crisis yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've always liked to start things early, though. So, you never know. No. How's uh, work going, Brent? Good. 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 Yeah, we Staying got busy. Um, Coke Industries project, the Newton Medical. Oh, really? I'm good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. By gosh, we even have a project going on in Genesis. Can you believe it? Oh wow! Goddard, what about though. the one? What not in the one in Goddard? I don't know anything about it yet. I haven't heard. Mm-hmm. What's that beeping? That's more people joining in. Oh, yeah. I actually had to shovel a little snow this week. I think you jinxed us, Larry, worrying about them um, plowing the streets and blocking people's driveways. And then but the plow came through and I'm like, I can't get out of my driveway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had about a foot of, foot of ice in my driveway that I had to clean out. You used to blame it on the county and now the city's doing it because the county used to do Main Street. Do we have everybody here? Hey, this is Fred. I'm on, but I'm just going to be on audio because I'm driving. Okay. I didn't want to see your face anyways, Fred. Well, <laughs> I de- my, 
my wife says I have a face for radio, so. <laughs> I don't know. That picture of you on there that pops up, though. It is. That is a pretty hot picture. That is a pretty, that that's, a pretty, that's a pretty hot picture right there. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Phil. How are you feeling, Mayor? Uh, I'm I'm here. I'm living it. Yeah, living the dream. Yep, that's good. Yep. So, and then we we got uh, Janine that here. She wants to talk. I think so. That's that's good. So, okay. Well, is it seven o'clock? Okay, it's seven o'clock. So, I guess I. Let's start the meeting, and we'll have a uh, prayer by Larry Zimmerman, uh, uh, Pledge of Allegiance. So, All right, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. All right, if you'd take the time for a prayer here. Lord, we're just ever so thankful that we can come together as a body to do the business of the city that uh, citizens of this community have entrusted to us. We just ask that you give us your guidance and your leadership in the decisions we make and ask that you would help us to make wise and prudent decisions on the behalf of the citizens of God, or if we ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, thank you, Larry. Um, uh, we'll move in for the approval of the agenda. Oops. I guess I look for a motion for an approval of the agenda. Like to make a motion to approve the agenda. Motion I'll by Brent. Second that. Second by Michael. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Love you, love you. Stay home. We'll touch you soon. Okay. Um, let me go here. Uh, then we got to move into citizen comments. Is there anybody that? Uh, I think Janine. There you are. Okay, Janine. Yep. What would you have? What would you like to say? Um. Okay. So I have a statement which I'm going to read to you. So, um, everybody knows I'm not a resident of Goddard, but I um, have been associated with this community for close to thirty years now. Um, so I, I, I feel I have a vested interest in, in the community and its members and how we go forward. Um, but I wanted to address the issue of our current community centre today and going forward. And I know you probably think, oh, oh gee, you know, everybody's talking about this again and you feel like it's a cracked record and I'm going on about it, but it's... To me, it's uh, very important. Um, and I feel that this community to uh, make positive progress in a positive manner, um, we always need to have this um, important issue at the forefront of, of how we go forward in this community. Um, I read on Facebook page, our City of Goddard Facebook page, our mission statement, um, which is to create a vibrant community growing and accessible, the destination for a family-oriented family active lifestyle. And I acknowledge that with the current and upcoming baseball fields and the swimming pool center and other improvements in that complex, that we will attract multiple families to this area. So it's definitely a growing community. And having been a swimming pool family with both of my daughters being a, in a competitive club that traveled to multiple destinations throughout Kansas for swim competitions, I know there is always downtime when you have a two to three day competition, which I believe um, the Genesis Complex is going to be attracting those larger competitions. Uh, visiting families 
in those competitions always need a place to go and unwind and perhaps do some local shopping, stretch their legs um, and get to know the community that they're in. There's always time to do that when you're in these large competitions. This is where a central community building complex becomes very important. The community building needs the ability to have smaller and larger rooms for rent for birthday parties and family gatherings. A vibrant community is always reaching out to its members to offer learning opportunities with seminars and other enrichment activities. We need to engage our community members and make them feel proud to be part of this community and not act like it's a sleeping suburb of Wichita. There is a need for community members to have access to multi-purpose building. I am part of the Auburn Hills community in West Wichita, and we have two community buildings that are constantly booked, sometimes through the week, but always Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. And we always have a waiting list. To grow a community, the members need to feel connected to the community with a sense of belonging and a sense of pride. I know I have heard before that in order, and you have as well as, that in order to have a new community building, we need to increase taxes. And currently we have people that are struggling with economic hardship. However, I feel there's never going to be the right time to get this project started. We just really need to knuckle down and get it going. More families are moving into this community, which can be easily seen with all the new subdivisions and new construction. A vibrant and accessible community centre complex for all is a beginning to create a community we can all be more proud of. So that's my comment I, for this evening. I just really want people to think about this community center complex opportunity. And I think personally, we need it to keep improving our community and to move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Janine, I appreciate that. And just so you know, and other um, community members and citizens, we are working on different options on what to do. Um, I know that Larry has been working on different um, options as far as keeping it on Main Street. Um, I know that uh, Brent Trailer has other, other opinions as well on um, what we should be doing. And um, we have a, a great team behind us that we've got to try to somehow secure the funds on and in a conservative manner on how to do that and then move forward. Um, we're not trying to put it on the back burner. This is not a project that I think any of us are wanting to put on the back burner. It's just, how do we go about doing it responsibly? So thank you for speaking, Janine. I appreciate it. We always like hearing you come and talk to us. So thank, thank you. you. Yes. Okay, is, is there anybody else? Uh, I don't see anybody that is needing to speak. So we'll move into the next item, uh, consent agenda. Did everybody take a look at the accounts payable? Yes. So I guess I look for a motion, approve the consent agenda. Motion to approve. Motion by Michael. Second. Second. Second by Sarah. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Is that, was that everybody? Is Brent there? Mm -hmm. Okay. I had to take aye. a drink. Yes. Okay. Aye. All right. Okay. <laughs> Good. All right. Motion passes. Okay, item H1. Sorry, I didn't mean to go mime mode again. No problem. 
this is our uh, annual gap waiver that waives the um, cash basis law, which is what um, almost the entirety of Kansas municipalities follow with the exception of a couple of first cities of the first class. Uh, it again waives the uh, requirements for a cash basis system, which the cash basis system says is that we don't, we don't account for revenues until those revenues are actually received, nor do we account for expenditures until such time as those expenses are actually under, undertaken. Next slide. Uh, it last occurred in our uh, January meeting with resolution 2001 and it directs staff and specifically Matt and the auditor and uh, our bond council to proceed utilizing this form of uh, accounting. Next slide, please. Uh, again, if, if we don't adopt then we'll need to uh, go to a modified accrual system, which means that we need new software and, and whatnot. Uh, the resolution was written and reviewed by our city attorney, Ryan Peck and it conforms with uh, 75 uh, 11120, which is the uh, Kansas statute. Um, again, this is pretty much housekeeping. This one and the next one are what most cities uh, do the first, uh, first meeting of every year to allow for uh, the accounting of expenditures and expenses. And then the next item that we'll cover will address uh, payment and allowing for payment as it uh, occurs. So if there are no questions, um, we would ask you to uh, consider the resolution as presented. Any questions? Thing none, I look Sounds for a motion. Good. I would like to motion. Motion by Michael. Res oh, okay. Resolution 2101. Motion by Michael. Second. Second by Brent. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, motion passes. And that's resolution 21 01. Uh, the appropriation resolution. Uh, it conforms with um, our best practices. It also helps to create transparency and was adopted with the uh, resolution 2002 on January 6th of 2020. And what this does is, is it allows us to, uh, uh, to pay the ordinary business claims and then report those in the accounts payable to uh, the city council. Uh, we've adopted this annually. Um, it doesn't modify amend any of our current, uh, next slide please. It doesn't modify or um, you know, adjust any of the purchase policies. And uh, again, we still re report it as is. Um, we have three signatures to process any claim request. Uh, the, the authorized signers are uh, the mayor, the city administrator, the city clerk, the city treasurer, and we have uh, the deputy treasurer and clerk as well uh, because of COVID situations and folks in and out of the office, we've, we've expanded that for, again, requiring three signatures on any expense. Next slide, okay. Um, there's no cost for the passage. Uh, resolutions reviewed annually by the city auditor and uh, it was written by our city attorney. Next slide. If there are no questions, uh, we ask you to move to adopt the resolution as presented. I move to adopt the resolution as presented. Motion by Michael. Second. Second by Sarah. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, motion passes. And the next item will be the boundary resolution, which will be presented by our city planner, Michael Scott. And that was resolution 21-02. Thank you, Thatcher, sorry. Honorable Mayor and City Council, this is um, just a quick background. This is pursuant to the Kansas statutes annotated 12-517. 
Um, basically, it's just saying that we every year we're going to consider a new resolution that legally defines the boundaries of the city. And the city engineer drafts this resolution and works in tandem with myself being the city planner and we basically submit it and it's 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 uh authorized with the register of deeds and um we bring it about through Cedric county gis and then we bring it in into our data system as well and we utilize it for mapping and everything else and it's it's reviewed and received by the county um and other legal authorities so this is part of that background next slide this is what it looks like it looks very similar to the one that we had last year there's just a small bump out on the west side from that small annexation of that property just to the north of the dillons uh, that's basically the only change from last year um, in 2019 we had arbor creek which was the big one that we brought in this year, we're just seeing that small bump out from that small residential property. Next slide. Financially speaking, there is none. Uh, this is just a statutory requirement and is approved as a form legally speaking. Next slide. Uh, it's recommended city council adopt the proposed resolution establishing the boundary of the Goddard Municipal Corporate Limits. And this will just be a voice vote. I've seen a little bitty square that's in the middle of town that's not annexed. Is what is that anyway? Yeah, no, I, I figured that question was going to come up. Let's backtrack a little bit. There's some obviously some some odd bump outs that you guys notice. Uh, each one um, has their own kind of unique story behind them. In the upper uh, northeast corner, that little triangle that you'd see. Um, yeah, that one exactly. That's actually Secretary of Transportation. Uh, it's KDOT. They purchased that little land. If you move over um, to the west, that's all Hawkins. So you got the three properties on Hawkins Road. Those ones were considered for annexation a, a while ago, um, and, but they never got brought in. We, we didn't bring them in. If you keep moving over a little bit more, that little property, back in 2010, we petitioned the property owner to be annexed and they actually consented, but before we officially brought them in, they actually sold the property. Um, so it made the resolution to adopt them invalid because now there's a new property owner and we've never reached out to them yet to consider them for annexation. If you go south, directly south of that to that little square, that's actually Mr. Lancaster's property. That one um, is unplatted. It's a uh, part, I don't know if you consider it part of a farm or not, but that's just a it's just well, a piece of property that we never brought in. And, and pardon me, Micah. And part of that up. was prior to the Starbond site development, um, both the the big blue blocks all the way across, where you can see where the linear trail is immediately to the south of uh, Mr. Lancaster's residence. All of that area along there was not, well, going going east, I apologize, was not in the city. And so once the Walmart site developed with Goddard Galleria along 183rd Street, that quarter section came in. And then with the uh, Starbond project, that parcel came in and all of that ground was originally part of Mr. Lancaster's um, uh, property. Uh, it was it was a family trust and whatnot. And he had that parcel within that. And so it's just one of those things that it, we never brought it in um, because the property in and of itself uh, was part of that larger part and, and they were brought in independently and separately. And so it's just something administratively that we never pursued following up with. So that's kind of the history to that one. And then the last piece at the very bottom, um, that's part of the school district. When the school was brought in, for some reason that was interpreted as being exempt from the resolution to be brought in. And I think that was under the impression that it was going to be a right of way, something particular to this to the school district. And so when that came up, we've been working with Cedric County, but Cedric County in reviewing that legal description said specifically that there was an exemption when it was annexed by the city and that included that small section over there. So this is something we would have to work with the school district with to see why exactly they wanted to exempt that portion of the school. Um, and if they don't have any real reason for it to be exempt, then we could ask them if they would consider to be have that portion brought into the city limits. 
but the way it was written in the resolution for the annexation for that part of the school that part was exempt and so we would have to basically submit another resolution and bring that that portion and micah could you please explain to the council and the public the gray areas along 167th street to the east side there absolutely yes very much thank you brian um so obviously the big blue section uh, is goddard that's our city limits proper that's the city limits of goddard the dark gray section is the county and the light gray just to the east that is that is wichita so as you can see wichita that small uh that big square in the northeast section of the map or basically the north if you're looking up exactly right there that's Tallison. Um, and so Wichita is right up on our on our front door on that particular section right there. And as you can see, there's big parcels and tracts of land that separate us from Wichita. But every every annexation that Wichita does, they bring us they bring right up to our our city limits. So that's that's what that section is. And and with each passing year, they also increase their growth area into ours. And I believe how far north and west of us does wichita see their growth area going in the next five to ten years micah oh that's a good question i have to go back and review it i just know that with the annexation that we brought in uh and so i can't speak specifically on the boundaries in terms of the city of the streets that would that'd be easier to define it by boundaries with streets but for that small parcel that we brought in for this particular annexation to adjust our resolution for this boundary they rezoned it light industrial. And one of the reasons that they were able to rezone it light industrial is because at some point, according to the zoning code for Wichita and Cedric County, they anticipated that small piece of land to be actually be in Wichita sometime around 2040, 2050. So they were anticipating actually to be, have Wichita be around us all the way up to 215 at some point. So we, we want to consider the sort of the strategic growth that Goddard should adopt in, in, in how we want to move forward into the future. Well, we we talked about growing to the north and in the different planning stages. Uh, the only thing we could do is, I guess, request to see if the farmers in that area would be willing to annex in and leave their land agricultural in nature but yet be become part of the city to where the city of Wichita couldn't take, take it in. Certainly, and there's definitely a lot of options that we can consider for that. Uh, currently, we don't have a zoning classification for agricultural. That might be something we'd want to consider. Um, and state law prohibits annexing more than about 21 acres, I think, of agriculture at any one time. Um, we just have to, unless there was a petition by the property owner to have it be annexed. And so we would have to consider, consider all the legal uh, questions and hurdles that we'd have to go through for annexing agriculture. But And, and we do anticipate bringing forth uh, a, a growth policy or strategy to undertake here sometime in late first quarter, early second. I don't think we want to wait till until they've already got plans on going around us before we get something going. Yes, sir. We'll, we'll make it a priority. So and also, also those little squares in the center of town that you mentioned, is there any way we can just, I, I think we, there's a way we can just square off our borders and take them in, can't we? Yes, sir. Those are all eligible for uh, unilateral annexation. Because uh, to me, it looks like on that Lancaster land, uh, if I remember right, that goes out to the middle of the street as far as the, it belongs to the county up to the middle of the street where we have an annex. So that means if somebody gets a ticket in front of Lancaster's land on the uh, east side of the road, we can't write them a ticket. So that just sort of makes it unhandy in consideration too of having people use certain you know, people driving on the streets tend to beat up the streets over time and having those properties that actually utilize the streets it would make sense to have a certain amount of revenue to offset the cost for maintenance over time uh if there are, if, if there's any other questions feel free to speak up and i'm happy to answer them as 
to the best of my ability. Um, but at this point, we would look for a recommendation for establishing the boundary of Goddard Municipal Corporate Limits. I don't see any more questions. We got a motion. I think Michael, your your uh, mics. My my mic. Um, yeah, uh, well, I will propose uh, we adopt the uh, proposed municipal corporate limits. Motion by Michael. Second it. Second by Larry. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, motion passes. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Honorable Mayor and Council, item H4 is the second discussion for the community center. Um, little background analysis. Um, the gov governing body directed staff to explore some options for addressing the condition of this city's community center. Um, Public Works contacted three construction companies and requested cost estimates broken down into various stages of renovation. The stages we asked for range from minor siding repair and painting to a complete interior and exterior renovation. As of the, the, this meeting, three of the companies contacted, um, Commerce con two of the three companies con contacted, Commerce Construction and Hutton Construction responded with cost estimates. Next slide, please. This is a, a really kind of a brief um, summary of their cost estimates. Um, as you'll see, we've got everything from for minor siding repairs and painting for all the way, you know, new siding, new windows, um, remodeling the front facade, renovating floors, replacing the floor with concrete and everything up to um, a full remodel. There is significantly more detail on this on attachments H4A and H4B, which are the submittals that the both the companies gave me um, for the project. Um, these are cost estimates. These are not hard bids. But you'll notice there's, there's just a lot of interesting things we can do to the current building if council so chooses. Um, you'll notice on the fourth or fifth item down, the remodel the front facade, there is Commerce um, quoted us right under 40,000 and Hutton quoted us around 80. Um, the big difference in that, and this was something interesting Hutton came up with, they proposed taking off the front 16 feet of the building, building an awning and putting a little, for lack of a better term, courtyard out there in front of the building and bricking the front facade of the building to match City Hall. And that's just one of many options. Um, it just really would, would, would benefit all the council members to look through the, the detail and the attachments to really get more information on what you, each one of these different stages um, is comprised of. Next slide, please. Right now, there's no, um, no financial implications at this time and legal basically approved a form. Next slide, please. Um, no really recommendations. This is a discussion item, so the floor, I guess, is open for discussion. Does anyone have questions? I never seen anything on there about what it would take to sort of beef up the floor without removing it. Does, if you did, they, uh, did it go and crawl underneath it and take a look, see what's going on? They the it was interesting on the floor. We we talked about the issues with the floor, and both the engineers that came in uh, didn't think it was that big of a of a situation, and ne none of them stated that they would crawl under the floor and beef it up. One of the options was to, was to essentially remove the wood floor, build stem walls underneath it and put the floor back on top. And both companies had options to basically replace the entire wooden floor with a concrete floor. So they did address the floor. And if you'll look at items, um, really in the, in the commerce, attachment it is the floor is listed in the interior remodel and they are proposing um, putting in a wooden or a, a concrete floor and then putting the wood back on top of it and Hutton both proposed both um, putting in a concrete floor and um, 
rejuvenating the wooden floor. But the floor to them was not not as big of an issue as it seems to be with, with our discussions. So they didn't see anything that was gonna cause a failure in the immediate future on the floor? Not in the immediate future. Um, the floor actually, the, the way the floor was originally constructed, the, one of the gentlemen um, commented that it's a very solid design and construction, but of course the, the footings under it are just worn out. Well, I thought we were gonna get an estimate on maybe replacing the footings or something. We, we do, it is in here. Um, there are two from Hutton. One is actually removing the wood floor and deck and to provide additional support for floor joists under the floor and a new plywood subfloor and LVT flooring was, they quoted us 75 to 100,000 on that. And then the, they quoted us 125 to 140 to remove the existing floor, fill it with sand and place a concrete floor and LVT flooring over it. So there are options. And then Commerce did not break the floor out. Commerce Construction did not break the floor out as an individual item. But if you look on the attachment and the interior remodel, they, one of the portions is that, um, basically um, building a post and beam frame on top of a new footing and then putting the existing floor structure on top of that. So they have given us some options in the floor. So some are, some are replacing the floor, putting concrete other, others are putting new beam structures under and putting new flooring on top. Does anybody have anything else to say? Well, I think at the least we could do is maybe fix the siding and then see if we can get it painted or whatever. I don't think yes, we want. I don't think we want to spend a whole lot of money on a building we're possibly going to tear down and come with new. And, and as you can see here, there are some options for that. Um, for Hutton, for as little as eighty five hundred dollars quoted, minor repairs on the existing siding and painting. Um, commerce was a little higher at, at, at just under 20,000. New siding would be significantly more, as you can see the row below that, that's um, 54 from Commerce and approximately 40 from HUD. Any other questions, this? opinions? Now, Mayor, Michael? remember this is, sorry. No, go ahead, go ahead. Bro. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mayor. Um, no, you're, this you're is, fine. This is a discussion item. So, I mean, all these items are open for council discussion. Um, I'm not proposing one way or another on any of these, just giving some information for y'all to, to, to read and um, make a decision or not, do whatever you'd like to do. So if, if we were to go, um, with, I mean, 275 uh, feels like we should almost just knock the thing down and start over. <laughs> Do we know what it yeah, would cost right. to just start over? <laughs> Currently, we have not gotten any kind of cost estimates or bids on a new building. So I just, I just basically focused on renovations to the current structure. Okay. Oof. I think it's going to cost you more money to knock it down and rebuild more than two seventy five. Um, I know that Larry has been talking about another lot that might be um, talked about in the future if we want to relocate somewhere else. Um, I guess one of the big questions I have for the council is it's something that we want to dish in a lot of money in to uh, pretty much patch it up or do we want to um, start having heavier discussions on putting a new community center somewhere else? I, you know, we, we could always, you know, put the siding and paint on the outside. I just don't know that it's even worth that if that's all we're gonna do. 
it seems like the floor is the is a massive issue, um, and and it sounds like if we spent a few hundred thousand dollars on it, or five, I mean we could have a, a very usable building for the next five to ten years, and that would get us out far enough to have the kind of community center and library that we'd like to see in Goddard. Um, you know. Uh, but it gives us more options uh, and, and buys us a little more time because 275 compared to a three to five million dollar building is pretty nominal. Oh, no. Now, I'd like to add that the 275 upgrade to the finishes on the entire building does not include a remodeled kitchen. So I just want to, I just want you to know that, that if we were to do the kitchen, it'd be approximately a hundred thousand dollars more. That's an if, of course. So these are cost estimates. So things could get, could get more expensive when it came down to it. Hey, Brooke. Yes, sir. Did you ever get anything from Van Asdale by chance since he's the one that did our city hall? I have not yet. Um, not everybody was able to make it out in time for this. I had one company out today and I've been trying to contact him, but he hadn't been able to make it out yet. Okay. You might add him to your list. Yes, sir. I intend to. Well, my, my, my thoughts were just to re fix the outside, repair the siding and whatever, and get it painted and looking decent so it's not an eyesore. And then spending what money we wanted to spend as far as good money on to locating a lot to put the new building on and then and then starting to figure out ways where we can get the money put together to put a new building up instead of burning up a quarter million dollars on something we're going to tear down in five years. Well, I think uh, there's definitely more discussion to be had. Um, I don't think we'll come up with a decision right now. Um, Brooke, is there uh, more detailed um, descriptions of these quotes that you can send over to us? Yes, they should be included in the agenda packet. Under yeah, right. Okay. Well, I think what we should do is uh, um, take a little bit more look at these, um, these options and then you know, uh, start having a few more discussions on where we would like to put a new community center. Cause I think that's, I think where, where we're all headed is we would like to maybe relocate it anyways. And the big thing is, do we want to spend over a quarter million to patch the, the building that we have up right now? if that's okay with everybody else. That, that's okay with me. I don't know about the rest of them. Fine with me. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. There's just been a lot of people talking about uh, a, lot of, a lot of citizens and, and other interested parties who they want a facility they can use that is uh, ADA accessible. Um, I realize there's a lot of that building's non-ADA compliance that's been grandfathered in because it's so old. But, um, you know, there's, uh, we're, we're not at a, yeah, we're not at a place to afford the kind of building we want to have, but I, I don't want to do anything to, to delay how long it would take us to get there either. So I'm fine with that option, but um, for the folks that are very interested in, uh, a solution short term, it seems like this would be a much better short term solution. And, um, but I, I realize, uh, yeah, it's not a long, long term solution either. Okay. I think, well, it's I, gonna, I think it's going to become a matter of where we want to set our priorities. Do we, do we yep. want to spend money on parks or do we want to spend money on a community center? Right. Where, where, is, where is the major priority that we want to push our money to? Right. And where, where are the citizens going to be happiest if we delay park park progress or put it into a community center or, or kick the can down the road on a community center a little longer? I don't know. Yeah. 
I think the Brian, the next discussion we need to have openly is where about do we want to uh, maybe relocate for a new community center and yeah, so, uh, put that on the I'm next sorry. agenda. No, go ahead. I was going to say, um, and this kind of dovetails seamlessly into our next item, which we plan on just touching lightly since we're remote uh, today. And you you hear me say this frequently, and um, we know that uh, we don't necessarily need to have a property tax increase to build a new facility, even a multi-million dollar facility. Um, but what we say each budget season and each time we review the capital improvement program is, is we can do just about anything, but we just can't do everything. So if, if we have a plan and we know that that plan is for a long, to, to set money aside for a long-term project, a, a big expense, and then still do smaller incremental projects along the way, if we stay true to that process, then we can get there and we can get there in a relatively short order. But when we try and do everything all at once and to do it in a way that maxes out the credit card and, and ties the hands of city councils for the next 20 years because they can't do anything because we maxed the credit card out in 2020 or 2021, then that's when there becomes an issue. So whatever we do, uh, I think you're, you're right. The body is right to want to move prudently and diligently so that we meet the needs of what our people are want, our neighbors, the folks who live here and pay taxes here, and our community uh, members like Janine and so many of the folks that we have who are involved in the community and give selfishly to, uh, to Goddard, uh, we want to be able to make sure that, that we're meeting the needs of everyone and fulfilling that vision that the neighbors and community members told us, the city, they wanted to see. And, and I think with that, we know that um, a community center is important moving forward. We know that lower utility rates are important moving forward and, and you know we are working to accomplish that. Um, so as we move on to the next item, which would be the 2021 governing body goals and objectives discussions, I thought uh, since we're, we can't be together, that what we could do is, uh, Thatcher, if you could go to the next slide, which shows the business plan. If you could go back one, please. Uh, I think we can kind of just keep it here for this evening um, and, and say that, you know, here's the mission and the vision and kind of the goals by compartment of that community plan that folks would like to see. The amenities and enter entertainment, the high quality parks and recreation, the beautification of public space, bringing people together with community connectedness and having you know, a, a, a myriad of housing opportunities for folks that are across all age and income spectrums where folks who just graduate Goddard High and Eisenhower can afford to live in Goddard if they so choose while they go to school or they go to trade university or, or go to work. And so um, with that, what I think we would, we, we, we would do since we can't all be together and do it on the whiteboard like we traditionally do is just kind of have everyone throw out kind of your top two big priorities. And then as staff, we will come back with estimates and time kind of general time frames for what we think it might take to accomplish with everything that we have. And then from there at the next meeting, we can prioritize. And then uh, from there, you would give us our marching orders and your expectations. So with that, I'll, I'll okay. turn it over to you to brainstorm. Um, I guess, Larry, we'll start with you. What do you, what do you envision for this next year? What do you, what's your main goals that you'd like to see be accomplished? Well, I think we need to sort of look forward a little bit into the community center as far as at least locating a site and maybe even getting it purchased to where people can see that we are moving forward on it. And I would also like to see if there's some way that the staff can get up there around Maple and so on on 199th and talk to the farmers up there and see if there's some way we can annex that land in on it, maybe even 
oh, three quarters of the way past up to Maple or something to head off Wichita's growth and keep from going around us and, and landlocking us on the, on the east side. I don't know if there's any way we can pass some sort of ordinances or something that we can annex in agricultural land and leave it to where they don't have to pay the higher city taxes seeing as it's agricultural or not. We can, we can do something along those lines, yes, sir. But at least that would give us a little bit of time to where Wichita couldn't come around us and all of a sudden landlock us to the east and to the north. And uh, Larry, just so you know, as far as the east is concerned, um, I think, you know, I brought it up to um, uh, Brian's and uh, Mike's attention that there could be possibly more developments on uh, the, the west side of 167th. Um, and uh, so we're, there's a few different options and parcels of ground that we're that a, a developer might be interested in and in building out there. So if we can, if we can try to um, branch out more uh, east, we can start marking our territory over there. And I think we're, uh, there's already been discussions with pretty big developers on how to, how to get that done. Well, I mean, we've had talks in the past that we thought that possibly that they were even going to make it up past central before we could, you know, get our boundaries set. And, and so it's something we just can't, you know, sit and wait for them to go around us. We got to figure out some yep. way to block it off. Yep. 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 Well, uh, uh, how about Sarah? Sarah, what do you have? Um, I think I'd like to um, focus on the North Parkland and see how we can progress with establishing that uh, land that we purchased into a usable park space for our community. Um, possibly even look at if that's an option for the location of the new community center. I know it's not in Old Town Goddard or Goddard Central. Um, but Goddard is not that spread out that that North Park land would be that far out of the way, I, I don't believe, especially um, with like Janine said, if it were to attract people from the um, Starbond areas, it's straight up a mile up the road. Um, so I think that might be an option we could consider if there is room on that land. Um, we already own the land. So that would cut costs there at least as, as long as it doesn't cut too much into the park area that we had planned out. But I think those two things are where I'd like to focus this year. Well, my, my thoughts always been on trying to keep downtown vital. And the only way you can keep downtown vital is if you keep people downtown and the only way we can keep people downtown is to keep it active with uh, things like a community center which would draw people into downtown and that would help promote business that's already there and that's that was just my way my thinking and, and I fully agree with that it's just do we have land options in that area and that's that's my only thought on not possibly being able to keep it located downtown. Well, I think uh, those are great points and obviously we need to work out the, the little detail, but I'm sure we'll figure something out. Uh, Michael, what do you have? Um, yeah, my, my two uh, initiatives are probably center around uh, beautification of the public space. Um, as uh, as people are moving into this area for for new jobs and they drive around the different uh, community options goddard is not in a place where it's got the curb appeal that we should have to attract the kind of residents that that we could especially with uh, the best schools in the area 
Um, that's just one aspect that families are looking at is the schools. Uh, we have got to up our curb appeal. Um, the second thing uh, would just be to add uh, to the uh, just, yeah, progress on a community center um, because amenities like that um, that are visually appealing, uh, uh, really anchor a community uh, around activity. Our, our parks are in uh, somewhat decent shape. It's a really good start. Um, but a uh, community center would be a, a really good thing to at least move forward on a plan so that when we do have the revenue for it, we're certainly uh, already in motion on it and, um, and, and can be taken action when we've got the money for it. Well, what, what the council might take a look at too is we just inherited that land up there by, uh, up uh, there behind Orschlands. You know, there's enough land there for community center if that's someplace we would want to put it. We own the land now. So that might be a possible solution to that. We've already got that land up there and it's on Main Street. It would, at least it's on North Main anyway. But it would be someplace we could put it where we wouldn't have to pay money to put the building as far as land. And since there's some more housing planned on being up in there, it would it would be accessible to the new people going up in that new housing addition. That's a, that's definitely an option. Um, and I think that's one thing that Brian, uh, we need to talk about as, as far as location and a, and a future meeting here pretty soon, as far as where, where are we actually going to think about sticking it? So have, have we, uh, have we had a study done on where it would be most beneficial to put a community center in Goddard? I don't think, think so. Not to, not of my knowledge. No, sir. We haven't, we haven't done that. I, um, I don't know. I don't know as we want to spend 25, $30,000 to have somebody tell us where to put a community center. <laughs> well, Hey Brent, what do you have? Your mic's all uh, off. Okay, can you hear me? There you are. Um, well, I'm kind of thinking that uh, the community center could stay downtown. We'll just have to build a new city hall instead. And then the community center could be the city hall. What do you think? I think we've got a lot of money, a lot of money tied up in the city hall to make it to where it's usable. And then we'd have to remodel it again to make it a community center. So I think that would be pretty cost prohibitive, I think. Um, I will reach out to a couple architects and, and get some ideas. And we'll come back to you here on, on this. But I think you know, in, in writing down what everyone has said, and I know I didn't mean to cut council member trailer off um, or the mayor, but I think, I think we understand that, um, and we have known for a while that the community center is, um, is a priority. And it's a priority, yeah, it's so, definitely. You know, that, that is kind of uh, our 2021, um, you know, it was our unstated goal yeah. to begin with is to have clarity and direction. Um, so with that being said, um, I'll let council member trailer go back to his, his second and, and then we can get to the mayor and, and move forward. But I just want to say that, that we'll put something together and come back with a process that, that, uh, can fit right. everything. You, you know, this is one of those things where we want we want to do it right, and we want to do it right the first time. We don't we don't want to you know go halfway. Right. Brent, what's your second deal? I think they're both combined, aren't they? Can you even see me? No, no, not really. Oh, dang it, man! I don't. I'm on my cell phone. Can you see me now? See you now. Yes. Yes. There we go. Um, 
So community well, center. It's always been priority. the community center. I think the community center is a priority. Okay. Okay. Well, um, I think I've got, I've got three things on my mind. Of course, the community center is um, one of the uh, main big ones that's all um, on our, our agenda. But to uh, focus on a few other big items, I think we as a community need to think big picture and how we're going to um, really capitalize on the Starbond district and how we are going to uh, make Goddard this destination spot that we've really been investing a lot of time, money and energy into. And so one thing I want to look into is how do we how do we uh, help the infrastructure in the Star Bond district as far as trying to move some more commercial lots and getting maybe more restaurants and other amenities that uh, our, our community would want to have in there. Um, second is something that we're already working on and I think we're doing a, a great job and we already touched it a little er uh, earlier as housing. We're, uh, I think we need to focus on how we're going to start marking our territory more north and more east. And um, we've already, I've been having discussions with Brian um, that other developers and uh, landowners are interested in. And I think it's, I think we're going to start hearing some pretty exciting things, more housing coming into Goddard as well. So that's going to help out everything else. And then um, there's one more is the water utility rate um, discussion. I know Matt's been working on it along with Brian and everybody else. And uh, I look forward to hearing actually um, what our options are as far as maybe extending the debt and lowering the payments um, and how that's gonna work out. But uh, hopefully coming up with a decision on what we're gonna do um, here, here pretty soon, so. Those are, those are my things that I'd like to see get done. Um, but if anybody doesn't have anything else, then we'll, we'll move. I was, into I was just wondering if Brian could take a look at that lot that we talked about over there on main street and see if it's a possibility to buy it or not. And if so, how much they would want. We're working on, on that and a couple of the locations as well. All right. Okay. All right, well, if no one else has anything to say, we'll move into uh, the city administrator's report. And um, since I don't have control of the slides, um, I thought I would let Thatcher uh, give the presentation this evening and I can answer any questions. Thatcher goes out uh, week in and week out and gets us all those cool drone shots. Uh, oftentimes comes running into my office when I'm screaming because I can't get the the picture condensed down properly. And, and then uh, once I get the slides up, he is uh, d very diligent in making, uh, making sure that I don't make many of any grammatical errors. And then many times he's actually the one that kind of drops those in if I'm still busy working on some late edition agenda items. And ultimately uh, he's, he's just refining the process. So I thought I would let him give the report and I'll answer any questions as we move forward. And also to highlight the uh, the work that he does put in to this presentation uh, every every week that uh, I get credit for. So, Thatcher, take it away. Oh, I appreciate that, Brian. I'll try to give this a little bit from my perspective, and I'm sure I'll need Brian's help on some of the financial aspects of this. But um, just being out at the Starbond site, you can kind of see here from December seventh to right about a month later today. Um, they're working on that framing for the child care center. And then as far as I know, kind of as Rodney stated at the last meeting, there's a lot of work going in, going on inside here uh, with that water park. Um, hoping to make it out there with Micah here at some point and try to get some photographs in, in the inside of that building. So hopefully we can make that happen sooner than later. Um, and then moving around to the front of that complex is uh, that framing, that iron, a lot of that work is being done there for the uh, 
the health club, I believe that'll be in the front. And then over here again, a little hard to see, but I believe that's the stairway or elevator area to that second floor of the complex. Uh, moving on to Arbor Creek, I think most of these model homes are, at least the lots are complete. I think the in interior of, of most of those homes are near complete. And I'm not sure if all those are model homes or maybe one of those might actually be uh, a home that somebody's actually living in. Um, and then over here, uh, these are two homes on the west side, kind of closest to that school district area. Um, I believe this one's been complete for a little while. And then over here, this one's kind of had the foot, uh, the basement poured there for a couple weeks and is moving a little bit slower for some reason. Um, probably out of all the developments, Arbor Creek's kind of slowed up the most a little bit in the past few weeks here. So hopefully uh, they'll be picking up here in the spring. Um, as of right now, there's 245 lots with 28 lots already sold um, and 217 total lots remaining. Um, here's Cloverleaf. Cloverleaf out all the developments um, being out there week to week. It's, it's moving the fastest by far. So I believe these are the duplex homes over here on that west side. Uh, most of those already have roofs going up. Some of them, uh, the siding is underway and just, I believe one more in the row there uh, with a roof to go on it. And then I believe these are just the regular smaller or actually more duplexes. I, Micah might be able to answer that a little bit better, but those are all duplexes in that cul-de-sac. Okay, thank you, Micah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, over here, are kind of the residential home areas. And then these are the three newest properties. Um, this is facing north. And then there's also a property down in the corner of the picture that got cut off. That That's uh, another one of the newer homes in that process. So moving very quickly over there at Cloverleaf. I'm excited to see where it's it's going from here. Um, currently, there's there's 133 total lots. Uh, 96 lots are available, with uh, 37 of those currently sold. And this this number will likely need updated by the next meeting. We'll have updated numbers for you there. Uh, Elk Ridge. This is the second home going in. I believe the basement being poured and the driveway there. Um, this is in that second phase of Elk Ridge. So uh, I believe this this first home is. Uh, nearly complete or almost completely done. And then this is the second one coming in. And they're doing quite a bit of work out there. Uh, over there in the first phase of Elk Ridge, um, those three homes that we've kind of been updating you on, most recent image of those, I believe uh, these two to the, I guess to the south would be Almost nearing completion. This one's looks like they're hauling some trash away. And then that third one following up behind it. And then an, another one of those homes in that first phase is pretty much done. Just some driveway work, I think, and, and landscaping and yard work left on it. Uh, Rustic Creek, I, I don't believe there's anything new to report there other than if Brian, if you have anything on that, but. Yeah, we anticipate uh, presenting the uh resolutions for improvements uh, at the next uh, at the next council meeting or definitely is uh, no later than the first in February. Um, so I'll keep everybody updated any new drone shots out there. Um, our cut project I'm not aware of anything new on that again I'll let Brian speak to that but I, I think is the bid process still set up for February or March?
Sorry, I have to unmute. Yeah, yes, it is. Um, on the 138, 183rd Street uh, frontage road improvement, a uh, little bit of new out there. It's probably very difficult to see, but there's some uh, plastic temporary poles that were put on kind of that curve. So I, I think there's some more work to do down the road on lighting that area up. But for now, at least if you're driving through it, there's some some poles with reflective tape on there. So so you don't drive off the edge. So good start. Um, Mayor Specialties is, is working on the line cleaning this week that was approved at the last council meeting. Um, so they're starting, I believe, over here in this area closest to the water tower. And um, Brooke might know how far they made it on that today. Yeah, Thatcher, they haven't given me an update on how far they made it, but they, they've broken down essentially the northern section of Old Town into four quadrants. And as you showed, the first quadrant was done today and it will be finished up tomorrow. I know they haven't finished it completely today, but that's where they did begin. And uh, we, we put out an update about that on Facebook today. So there will be some updates coming in the next few days about when the rest of that area is gonna be complete. And then I believe our public works team is putting uh, door knockers out on, on all the doors in the neighborhood. So people know who to call and talk to. Um, and I'll let Brian speak to this a little bit more, but um, next meeting will be Tuesday, Tuesday, January 19th due to Martin Luther King Day on the 18th. Um, and then the utility rate update will be coming next and that too. Yeah, that's pretty much the plan. Of course, it, it, it is subject to uh, some change, but we expect it going forward. I know Matt and I are trying to coordinate a call with uh, our, um, with, with Brett Shogren to, uh, to look at what we'll need to do for the, uh, the debt issuance steps and what those numbers might look like so that when we discuss it on the 19th, uh, it'll be refined as much as it can be prior to going uh, forward with the process, if that's what the council would so desire. So are there any other questions over uh, the report? No questions. Okay. Well, uh, governing body comments. Larry, what do you have? Oh, I just know that uh, they did a good job as far as keeping Main Street clean and look, look like they tried to hit some of the arterials. And so my appreciation to the maintenance crew for staying on it as hard as they did. And that's all I have. Sarah? Just want to say thanks to Public Works for all their hard work through the uh, winter weather. They did a great job. I saw several comments on Facebook about um, how great the roads looked. And I know I saw them out multiple times. So appreciate all the hard work that they put in. And that's pretty much all I got. Okay. Michael? Well, uh, uh, yeah, I'm excited for 2021. I think a lot of people are pretty happy 2020 is behind us at this point. Um, and uh, yeah, I was bragging on our maintenance crews when I was in another municipality over the weekend. It also got six inches of snow and it was pretty treacherous. I was like, no, this, our Goddard guys wouldn't let this happen. What's going on around here? Hmm. So uh, again, thanks, uh, thanks guys for being so on top of it. I really appreciate it. Brent, what do you have? You're on mute. You're on mute. <laughs> did I get it? There you are. I got it. You know, they did do a good job on the roads. Now, Sarah, yeah. what, did, what was happened in your front of your driveway? 
I was joking about my driveway being blocked. It was fine. You just got to remember to shovel her driveway for her. <laughs> I, I might have actually asked if that was a perk jokingly because I know it's not <laughs> and Brooke shut me down real quick <laughs> I think Brooke should do it for you really you'd think the teenager who eats six meals a day here would do it <laughs> there you go uh, um everything great good good that he did a good job yeah thank you yes they did well, I don't have much more to add other than thank you to the city staff and uh, for everything that they are, they're doing right now, working and, and uh, staying safe for us. And uh, thanks to Public Works for that you guys did a great job, wonderful job. So um, I just hope that everybody stays safe out there and uh, we'll see you next meeting. I look for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion by, motion by Brent, second by Larry. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Have a good night, guys. Take care.